Welcome back to part two of submitting an app to the iTunes App Store. Now, I'm from Work App Home, as you see here on the screen. WorkAppHome.com is our company. And for those of you that signed up for you, we're glad to have you on board because you're about to find great new ways to increase your income by offering apps to small mom and pop businesses. So uh, when you get a chance, if you haven't uh, signed up for us, go to WorkAppHome.com. That's A-P-P -P as an app, WorkAppHome.com. Now, to get us going here, uh, you're going to be going to iTunes Connect. If you can't find it, type in I Google iTunes Connect Apple, and you'll find it somewhere on the searches. After you log in, you're able to see this prompted right to the screen. You want to go to My Apps, and as soon as you go to My Apps, you're able to go through here and hit the plus sign, hit New iOS App, and here for the name of the app, let's copy and paste this into it. As I mentioned before, it's all copy and paste. Um, really simple, easy system here. And so. The app is going to be business and secondary secondaries catalogs. So let's. If you're in another country, you choose your language. But if not, you choose English. If you're in the U.S. or North America. And the SKU, let's just call it Global Com Repair 101. Bundler ID Global Com right there. And then we hit create. Now from this point right here, it's going to ask us to upload graphics and everything else and uh, things like that there. So let's get started right with uh, some of these graphics on here. Let's choose a file. And I have all these here titled out as like 960 for the small screen, 1024 for iPad, 1704 for the new iPhone 6s, and so on. So let's just go ahead and just start grabbing these. Now sometimes they won't say it will fit or so forth because the new iPhone one there isn't really any set yet. So let's go with the 4 inch. Let's choose... Now this layout will change every year you go to the App Store. Every time there's something, every time there's a new iPhone that comes out, you are going to come across this here. And it's very confusing for many folks out there and frustrating for others out there who just want it straight to the point. Um, you could email Apple and ask them to just leave a basic system like what Android does. They don't change it, they leave it as is. And it, there's no issues with nothing else and stuff. So. Now all these ones here, these ones I'm grabbing are for the iPhone 4 screens. Uh, well, 5, I mean 5S. So this next one here I'll be choosing is for the much smaller screens. For the iPhone uh, 4. The other one is 5. And each one of these graphics that you see right here are what you will be viewing once you get into, once you load your app and it's approved for the App Store. You must wait for an approval process when working with Apple. Apple wants to make sure that all their apps are kosher, that everything meets their, their requirements, and that no amateur apps slip by and get into the App Store, which we have all seen many make it into the App Store. So 
I don't know what Apple is um, complaining about amateur apps, but they do make it in there. Unlike Android, you'll see tons and tons of amateur apps because uh, the difference between the two is that um, with the iPhone, they actually have teams that come through and sift through this process and look at all these apps and make sure that they are exactly what they're supposed to be for the App Store and what they say they are. Plus, they make sure that there is no rogue apps, which somebody puts uh, some sort of tracking virus or uh, other other things to steal your information, which is beyond uh, their their parameters. So it's in a way it's nice that they do that at least you know you're not getting apps with uh viruses on there um i was reading something about androids how they had the takedown how many thousands upon thousands of apps because they tracked down all these viruses on there the difference between the two is that android uh when you submit an app when we do that therefore on how to submit an android app on our next uh recording or our next video you will see that there is a big difference between the two the android is really simple really easy um, and you don't need to sit there, wait one week or two weeks for Apple to approve your app or have Apple reject your app and then have to make the modifications and to Apple's code and then submit it again and again and again until it finally goes through, which gets really annoying. Android, it just lets your app right in the app store one hour after you submit it at the most 24 hours, but, um, most of the time I always see one hour. So now we're going to do keywords right now. And we typed in the keywords over here, which I'm going to copy, go back over here, paste, and then I'm going to do App Store Description, which over here, copy, paste, and then for the URL, let's do... Uh, I would have the company URL on there, but their website is still under construction, and I don't want that to be rejected later on. I could always come back and change these here. So, you now it's asking for a graphic icon, which is going to be 1024 by 1024, which is the largest uh, that they have for the logos. And this year, this year graphic that you're seeing that I'm loading right now. This graphic I made in, um, I took their business card and it was just one green stripe in the middle across the business card and they wanted that as their logo. So I went and modified it a little bit and added two green stripes into it and made what you see here on the screen by playing around with it in Photoshop for about uh, 30 minutes or so to get it down just right. So. Now, what you're seeing here is a client of mine um, from a company up there in Juno, and what it is is that they have, they have, um, with an Apple account, only a handful of my clients have Apple accounts, uh, you have to pay $99 to keep your apps in the App Store. If you don't want to do that, or if, you're, if you have clients who don't want to, uh, what you do is you pitch the client who has an Apple account that you're going to increase their viewings by having links that take them to their app in the App Store. Have a graphic that takes it right to their app so they could download it. And um, it'll be under Sponsor. And you have a little sponsor icon on the contact page. You always want it on the contact page and no other page because the contact page is the final point when a person decides they want to contact that business um, of whomever app they downloaded. And... Um, it just makes it easier to be able to uh, work with um, many other companies who don't want to pay for all this stuff just to be there. So, um, put down my information. Um,
Now I want to automatically release this version. Let's hit save. And this is about almost halfway point of adding all the information into the App Store here. Okay, you must provide an email address for valid format experiences. Oops. Now this company here, Juno Taxi, I set them up so that they have uh, texting on their main line number, their landline, through their through our app building system, and uh, with the apps that I developed for them. And so let me hit save again. Let's see what pops up. And the icon should pop up right here in the corner. Pre-release pricing. Right, let's go to pricing on here. Let's choose free. Nope, that's not for that. Save. And then it's going to pop up a new screen here, which was never before. They're going to ask you for more information. Now, and then none. This is just so you could set it. So like if you had a price on the app and you wanted to give it away free for a day, you could do that uh, using these here systems on there. So for many of you who want to have free apps, it's always good to be able to, or uh, apps for 99 cents or more. Uh, I have seen one app for uh, $399.99 once in the app store. It was a dental app or something like that. But you could set these prices for whatever you want, whatever you think people are willing to pay for information. And people are always willing to pay for information. So... It says you have completed. Whoops, I think I hit save too many times. Okay, now let's get out of here and go back to our app. I don't know why they have a cancel button. It makes it sound like you're just trying to, I'm sure they'll change that by the time you see this recording, but um, it'll take you right back here. So I believe I have everything in place here um, that we need for this app to be submitted. Now let's go to App Loader. For those of you who aren't familiar with App Loader, App Loader is a, is a version, a separate app of Xcode. Well, it is Xcode, but after you sign into Xcode and everything, and then it gives you a separate app, you can look for App Loader on your MacBook Pro or Macintosh computer. So let's click this. Whoops. Before we get this far, um, first we must submit the app. So, and here, we have all this information. Let's hit save. And I'm back here at workapphome.com. Now let's go to ready to publish this app. And this process is fairly quickly. Start submission. Instant build. Let's hit next. Now let's get a distribution certificate, which is the ones we got from earlier. And let's go. The distribution is the blue one. And then I hit upload. And then I want, it's going to ask me for the, um, App Store provisioning portal, which is this one. Hit upload. And then it's going to ask me for my P12, which is this one. And I want to put my password that I put to that there earlier on the part one you've seen. Make sure you write down these passwords just in case you forget them. Upload. And all these are green check marks means it's go. There used to be one on the bottom, but we, we've changed that there. And then let's hit next. I want push 
notification disabled. Yes, because we did not sign certificates for push notification. Uh, I wish Apple would just leave it open that anybody could use it if they want to, but they want to know if you're going to use that feature or not. So let's skip past this part because we are disabling it. We're not using it. And it's going to show me my app icons, the ones I told you about I created earlier, and my splash screens, which I have already uploaded. Uh, I've showed you before on the first video on how to create apps. I hit next. If you don't have those in there, it will prompt you to do that now. Now here, um, we're calling this here Global Communications Phone Repair. And we don't want any of these here things check marked. At the bottom one, you can have check marked if you have an iOS app. Uh, the second one to the bottom right here, audio background enabled. That's if you have a radio player, um, you want that one check marked. And don't have any of these here, other information on here check marked. So, but uh, well, actually, for now, I'm going to put enable iPhone button, uh, enable info button. And uh, the bottom one is a shine. That means it'll put a shine right in the middle of the screen that you see right here, a little half circle. It makes it look like it's shining on top and kind of dim on bottom, but I, I don't want that there in there, so I'll leave it blank for now. And uh, let's hit submit, and we're done. Now we just got to wait for emails to come through here that are going to say that this is what we are. This is the app that we could download. This it's ready to go. Now, if there was any problems in my certificates or in something in the submission process, this app builder will let me know and you will find out right away. If you do not walk through the steps that I have showed you, you will find a lot of drama in trying to get this going. It'll, the app builder will say unable to build and then it'll give you this long error message of what's wrong. And chances are you messed up on something on signing the certificates. So do the, the, the first video, how-to video before this one. Make sure you go through it step by step. I will offer you, um, if you don't feel like watching the video well, going through the steps yourself, I will offer you a PDF document on our .net, the workapphome.net, um, which is our training site for everything on there, um, from how to build apps, how to submit apps, how to sell apps, for those of you who want to sell apps for a living like I did, I've done this for over two years selling apps using the same system before I bought out the franchise and started uh, reselling it to all my clients and everybody else. And um, I will show you how to how to sell apps. Now, selling apps is an art. It really is. Um, it's showing them the benefits and not the features. Most people try to sell features. They say, oh, you could you can click the call, you can do this, you can do that, you could, uh, they just name off a whole list of features, which uh, clients don't care about features. They want to know how is it going, how are they going to benefit it? And that's what we're going to get more in detail on to, on the how to sell apps and stuff. And we will also offer a training session on a millionaire mindset. We want you to have the mindset of a millionaire when entering in the business yourself to be able to make the money that you want to. I, I will show you how to make $1,200 a day making apps and selling apps too. So it's a really fast and easy system. Now, the, right here, hold on here, let's see. Application prepared, binary will be provided soon. This is email just came in just a second ago. So with our system here at workapphome.com, we will provide you all the tools, whether it's building apps, submitting apps, um, selling apps, and also if you are uh, trying to just be in business in general for yourself or want to go into business and have the mindset. We also have the how-to video on changing your mind and because we are all groomed in this world to think we have to work hard for money. You don't have to work hard for money once you realize that you change that saying, that affirmation on I want to create things for myself in my life really quickly, really easily. I want to be, I want money comes to me easily. Money comes to me all the time. You'll start saying that there. So, but as we get further and further along with these here other videos, we'll be offering other things on how to use uh, PayPal, how to, um, 
how to use push notifications. So you can be able to get those little pop-ups on your screen there when you send out a blast to everybody. And there's also different marketing tools out there. You could get paid for sending out notifications to those out there. And if they click on it, you get paid, especially if they purchase something. Uh, we also have the ad banners, how to monetize your apps. So if you're not selling your apps for 99 cents, maybe you want to have an ad banner inside of there that people can click. And myself personally, um, I've made anywhere from $20 to a few hundred dollars a week doing something like that there with ad banners. And you could be making up to $5,000 a month with ads if your app goes viral. So, and one thing about with ad banners, you could sit there and sell your your client, uh, I, I charge only $300 an app. In my markets, I don't have that many business surrounding me, so I charge them what I would do for a website. That's about as much time as I would put in a website, just a couple hours building and developing these apps. And so, as we go through this system here, you will see that we offer the best way to be able to go into business for yourself or market yourself because we'll have some social media marketing on there um, on how to how to grow your business. Right now, we're growing super fast on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, Facebook is more like a family thing. I don't really see much of that growing anywhere, but Instagram is more business, and same with Twitter. Uh, we, we are starting to grow a little bit faster on, on LinkedIn, but we want to show you the tools and what hashtags and what words to say to be able to get out there and start gaining followers and when you use social media marketing you will notice right away that there is a lot of stuff that goes in the process of that there of trying to keep things going and you know when you're on social media remember you're you're selling to people not selling them um, dot coms to click on so and for those of you um, when you get into the app building, make sure you have a website. Use something like GoDaddy where it's quick and simple, like our systems here. Um, you'll be able to create a quick template website, talk about your services, and have it something where they can be able to find you at. Now, as we're rounding off here, I want to show you some of the apps that I've developed. These are quite a bit here. Let me click on 100 here. Even though I've developed, it says only 60 apps, but you times all these here by two. I have developed actually because the one's iPhone, one's Android. I've literally developed over 120 apps in the industry out there. Um, most of them here in Alaska, where I'm located at. And I would like to show you how you can be able to create high incomes by just these simple drag and drop. Drag and drop apps. You can see some of the icons of some of the ones on here. And let's see here. Our email just came in. It says your application binary, your order app is ready for download. So now that this is ready for download, we click on this link right here. It's going to pop it up in probably my Safari browser. And it'll just take just a minute or so to download. The faster your internet, the faster this downloads because this isn't that big of an application. So it says it's like 58 seconds to download. Now, when selling apps, I would like to give you some more pointers here. When selling apps, you will have a lot of clients that are wondering, why an app? I got a website. You're going to want to express to them that apps are growing right now 10 times faster than websites have done on its best day. Apps today are what websites were to companies over 10 years ago. You want to express to them that with apps, you're able to reach everybody on their mobile phones, uh, on the go. And they could be able to uh, click, swipe, click, open up your app. And if they want to contact you, they don't have to program a phone number. They could click on your contact page and click on your icon to click the call. And they got a hold of your services instantly. You're going to express that there to whomever you're selling it to. Those are very, very good price point selling points of apps and stuff. Tell them they can click to email you within the app and open it up in their email browser. They're able to look at their social networks or their um, whatever type of social networks they sign up for, whether it be Tumblr, Facebook, Twitter, have all that embedded to the app. 
For those that are musicians, you could tell them they could have their SoundCloud playlist on there. Every time they upgrade their playlist from home uh, on their computer, it gets immediately put right into the App Store. And so it's um, or into their app itself because it's uh, a cloud-based service there. And um, just some other selling points that you just want to let them know that apps will always outgrow websites there. You always hear about it all the time on TV. Uh, app gets uh, a million downloads. You don't hear about websites getting that. Plus, you also see on TV on commercials, it flashes available in iPhone, available in Android for download. So you get the advantages of, be, of being able to reach everybody on the go. Um, there's more and more people owning smartphones every year and wanting to upgrade their phones every year, you let your clients know that when they upgrade, that they're not only upgrade, that people aren't upgrading their computers anymore, they're upgrading their phones every year. They'd rather spend 500 bucks on that, and that PCs is a sinking ship. It is. You hear about all the time Dell's losing, losing market share. You hear about Microsoft losing market share. You hear all these conglomerate companies losing share. You let them know that there, and you tell them that what's sinking with this ship is also websites. So why go to a website if there's an app? So and it's easier to get be found in the app store. My my biggest selling point is I told them, I'll get you almost any name you want in the app store. That is for your market. When I was in the city of Ketchikan, I built an app for a company that was called Dolly's Tours or Dolly's House. And they were a tour company. And I told them nobody took the name Ketchikan in our city over here. And um, I will get you the name Ketchikan. And anytime people look for anything to do in Ketchikan, you'll be at those top search results under Ketchikan or Ketchikan Tours. And now they're found on those top search results immediately when you type in Ketchikan or Ketchikan Alaska in the iPhone App Store or Android because they now own that name in the App Store. So you will find many different ways to be able to sell them on names, get it in there. There was a company up here in Alaska called um, Fireweed House Bed and Breakfast. And I told them, well, I'll get you the name Alaska B&B. &B. Nobody used the name. So this is a brand new open golden market up here. So we got them the name Alaska B&B. &B. So you will see as you go along, there's many different price selling points. And as each one of these here come along there and start going together, you will have a much more high, high lucrative sales and pitches from everybody that you speak to. Now let's go through this here. This here app, you need to zip it up, compress it, zip it up. And then I put this in the dot certificates, certificates. This is in going through looking at my files here. And then we go to application loader from Xcode. And I showed you a second ago when we signed in right before we were waiting for the app to get approved. As we go through this process, let's go with, um, let's get right to my clients, global certificates. And it's the only one that highlighted right here that you see I could use, double click that. Now it's reviewing your application. It's getting ready to submit it. Yes, this looks good. Next, send it. Other pricing points you could sell, uh, sell your clients on. Let them know that Apple boasted in July of 2000. We're in right now in 2014 that they had the most downloads and. The most app purchases and highest revenue they've ever seen uh, in Apple history. So these are other tips. Uh, my goal is to help you sell apps. That's why I'm giving you a variety of tips on here on selling apps. Because the goal is that I would like you to make great income as I have building and selling apps. But for those of you who just want to make apps, if you're a school or if you are a um, a format of some sort, that, uh, like a web designing company or marketing firm. Um, all those are great too. I mean, you could use some of these here pointers and tips to be able to help out. Uh, if you're not pitching it to a company, maybe you're pitching it to um, a school of some sort or to um, any sort of entity. These are various ways to be able to get them to upgrade into the App Store. 
you want to let them know that they're advertising on their phone every day that your app is on there. You're, you, they're being advertised. Every time they swipe to their phone to make a phone call, which studies show that we're looking at our phone too many times more than we should be, actually. <laughs> So as you see, it's it's adding the pro, uh, adding all the information here, verifying the assets for iTunes, and uh, uploading this year uh, into the App Store, which is right behind you. You see the iTunes Connect. That's where it's going to. And um, once it's in there, then we got to go down and check mark the box that this is ready to go. So but this is a. Uh, these are the processes we go through when submitting an app, and you will see that uh, as you start building more and more apps, this year process will go a lot faster. And if you have a faster computer than or a faster internet connection than what I have, I live in middle of nowhere, Alaska, basically, and our internet connection speed is very slow. So what you're seeing here is the speed of uh, basically 4G um, through my iPhone. US being into my laptop but to give you more tips about building apps you're gonna to want to use Photoshop for those of you who aren't familiar with Photoshop start looking at some how-to videos online and how to use it there's a bunch of how-to DVDs and we might give you a couple how to uh, build icons for the App Store and how to make splash screens um, because there's a certain um, certain sizes that it does require to be in the App Store and so we want to be able to reach you folks on those market those playing fields there and get there into the App Store so with all these how to's that are out there um, we'd like to be able to have some of those for you but you could be able to find some on your own time with uh, some third-party companies these uh, Photoshop I create most of my application in Photoshop now um, it may offer in the future how to build apps with GIMP. Um, for many of you out there who are not familiar with GIMP, uh, movies like Scooby-Doo was done in GIMP, um, and a few other different other uh, animated characters and stuff. And GIMP is it's a free download, uh, GMP GIMP. Um, but I, I myself, I like using Photoshop. I've been using it for many years, and uh, I've never went to school for it. All I did is just went out and watched some videos down and if I had a question on something if I couldn't find a video on it or if it took too long for a video to get to it I would Google it and to give you another tip to find things on Google um, for those of you that says oh there's too much stuff to look for on there I can't find what I'm looking for here is a great tip for all of you and I try to upgrade all my clients I work with when you're searching on Google and this only works on Google if you're looking for say Jaguar the cat and you type in Jaguar, and you see JaguarUSA.com, the car, keep pulling up everywhere on the searches. So you turn around and to type in minus Jaguar USA, and then hit enter, and it will pop up. Let me show you just a quick demo real quick while that's still uploading. So I type in minus Jaguar you just start you just start typing in minus in the word or let's say I'm, I'm looking uh, I don't want Twitter in mine minus Twitter and then it'll take out all the Twitter search results as soon as I hit enter on Google so and maybe I don't want Facebook pulling up on there because I keep seeing Facebook pop up on all my search results and I don't want Facebook there next time I hit enter so that's some tips there that will help you find whatever you want on Google. You'll spend less time searching and more time doing what you want to be doing instead of always searching and not finding what you want. Because search engine optimizers make it so, uh, SEOs, basically what they call them, make it impossible to find what you want. Because you'll find it one day and the next day um, somebody else will be in that top search results you were looking for, that same product. If you didn't bookmark it, it's lost forever sometimes. So but try those uh, tips out you will see it a lot easier to find what you're looking for when you're looking for things like as I mentioned earlier for how-to videos or how-to instructions on the web for things in Photoshop now it's not that hard to use Photoshop not unless you're trying to do advanced 3d uh, graphics and stuff you will want to possibly take a course online course 
or something of that nature. So it says it's indexed, it's done, that's ready to go. Let's submit app for review. It's going to tell me that I, that I didn't click it below. Yep. Whoops. Let's go. Oops, I forgot what to do the ratings on here. Let's hit none on all these things. Um, it's not so much that I forgot, it's just that this is a whole new setup. Before, when you submitted an app, all these processes would prompt the next screen for you to do what needs to be done. Now, it just goes, it just gives you this long layout page, which is very lame, and it's not so great. Um, Unrestricted web access. You want to hit yes if you have a social network embedded into your app or something that accesses the web. After that, you hit done. But all these here, I, there's no horror themes, no medical treatment information, no tobacco, alcohol, drug use, no gambling, no nudity. None of that stuff's in this app here. And so and then it gives me a rating of age 17 plus. So I hit done. And then... See here, license. Okay, done. Say save. Now there's some flaws on here, and it's not showing me my build below, which is asking me to choose. So right here should have been a plus mark. Um, this is Apple's flaws. This is a new their iPhone six just came out just a few weeks ago, and so we're gonna see many many flaws every time they do upgrades. Let's just uh, sometimes I find it easier just to leave the page, go to something else. And then come back to it. Sometimes it'll reload it on the page when submitting an app. Let's try the reviews. I'm going to take you back to the beginning. Sometimes it's easier to just go all the way up than go all the way back in. This is, like I said, a, an Apple issue. Let's see if it showed me my builds. It's still not showing it. Try to submit it again. Let's see if it pulls it up. Said I must submit an app with Xcode, which I've done. Right here would usually be a plus sign, so I'm not sure what's going on. Um, let's go back out again. But once this does come through, I'm not sure why it's not showing up, but there would be a plus sign right where this mouse is hovering at. Um, I'm just going to keep hitting submit and hopefully it, keep, hopefully it pops up. But it's telling me to pick a build. And this feature has never been on here in the App Store ever before iPhone 6. 
So um, I'm not sure why it is it is saying this here, but. So I figure I will do like what I've done before, um, go through these different pages, hopefully it pops up. So well, it's not going to show it on this video. So you're going to have to, uh, if it doesn't show, I'd call and complain to Apple why it's not showing, uh, which I will be doing here in a few minutes. But to give you the gist, once you're done, it shows it there. You click yes, click the build that you just uploaded, and then you hit submit for review, and then it'll, it'll um, send you an email saying that your app is waiting for review, which takes one week to get in the App Store. So um, that is everything here today for how to submit an Apple app to Apple. I wish I could have been able to complete this process with you, but since Apple upgraded their apps for the App Store, this is not, um, their systems have been flawed, and it's you'll find this every year right after a new iPhone comes out and an iPad comes out. There's a bunch of flaws with their system. So, well, you have a wonderful day. We look forward to seeing you build many apps with our system here at workapphome.com. And, um, being able to have you part of our services. And remember, at Work App Home, we're only $60 a year for unlimited apps or 400 bucks for life. So check out our website. We look forward to seeing you. You have a great day.